Bible reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as a man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance, the Lord said, there anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed, rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The Word of the Lord. According to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with saliva, and smeared the clay on his eyes, and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier, as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. 
They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him? Since he opened your eyes, he said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You, are, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to uh, take this uh, opportunity to those who are here present and those who are going to be watching the uh, Mass on uh, uh, Facebook or YouTube later. That it is, uh, you know, it, it might seem to be a difficult time for all of us. But at the same time, God knows what He's doing, what He's going to be able to accomplish through this. In just to give you um, an example, especially now that uh, most people are not able to go to Mass or receive the sacraments. In the last uh, week of the life of St. Therese of Lisieux, she kept getting worse and worse. She was not able to speak well. Her lungs failed and she was not able to swallow or anything. Then, you know, they, they asked her, you know, what's going on with you? Are you going to die? And she said, I'm not dying. I'm entering into life. Then, not being able to receive the sacraments, she said, No doubt, it is a great grace to receive the sacraments. When God does not permit it, it is good as well, because everything is grace. So, I want you to uh, remain as peaceful as you can. Uh, we are going through a trial uh, during this time. So there are a few things that it would be good for us to consider. The first thing is that um, there is punishment. It's been, it's been there since the, the Old Testament. For example, from the, uh, the second book of Samuel, uh, King David decided to take a census of the, of the people of Israel. It was not God's will. And the book says that as punishment, God's wrath came upon the people of Israel until King David repented of what he had done. See, so, we, we need punishment. We are all sinners. We have offended the Lord. So, we have to, every single human being in this world needs to take these uh, difficult times either as punishment or as a trial, as a test. And we have to 
be able to pass the test because we do need it we do we do need it we do deserve it somehow or another so that's you know at the end of the day that's a good thing same now we cannot forget that God is our father that he treats us as his children so he's not a, a, a machine or any anything else he's our father and he wants us to go to heaven and sometimes we need a little correction so we cannot afford to see the whole thing simply from a human perspective because it makes no sense it makes no sense as of now the remedy is, is becoming worse than the illness itself but um, again only God knows what he's going to bring what he's going to bring from, from this but we need to keep raising our vision to see everything from a supernatural perspective and be able to see God's will there taking place so I want you to keep praying for us and keep hoping and increase your faith during this during this time no that's the first thing secondly we have this um, blind man in the gospel today we don't know the name as we don't know the name of the uh, Samaritan woman but um, at the beginning of, of this passage in the gospel today uh, Jesus says we have to do the works of the one who sent me now what are the works of the Father? Well, three things creation, redemption, and sanctification. And Jesus accomplishes the works of the Father quite concretely and explicitly in the Gospel today. So, but who is this blind man? Well, the Gospel tells us that he saw a man blind from birth. So we have to see ourselves in him. He is any of Adam's children. And by Jesus using homemade clay, recalls the moment in the book of Genesis, when God formed the first man out of clay of the earth. So Christ is recreating this man again. And he then invites the blind man to go and wash in the waters of baptism to complete his new creation. And he comes back being able to sing. So the washing that liberates him from the night of blindness. The night of blindness when no one can work. So he comes back able to sing. The thing is that he hasn't seen Jesus yet. And this is what we call sanctification. Sanctification consists in seeing Jesus, in seeing his will. And seeing Jesus requires interior communion with him, a personal relationship of love with him. And so Jesus personally takes the initiative in sanctifying the blind man by finding him. The blind man asks Jesus, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And falling down, the Gospel says, He worshipped him. Then Jesus declares in the long version of the Gospel, He says, For judgment have I come into this world, that they who do not see may see, and they who see may become blind. Now, the people were asking one another, is he not the one who used to sit and beg? And the blind man responds, I am. 
Well, he is the only person in the whole Gospels, in all the Gospels, who uses this expression. The only other person who uses this expression is Jesus himself, 27 times. I am, he says. In other words, through his creation, redemption and sanctification, the blind man, the, uh, the blind man is presented to us as another Christ who manifests the saving power of God. So he became the light of Christ. So how do we accomplish the works of the Father? In Adam, we all have been born blind. And most of us have been sent, have been sent to the pool of Siloe for baptism. Creation and redemption are accomplished through baptism. But, when, but then it comes the difficult thing, sanctification, to be able to see Christ. Or better, to be able to be found by Him. This is the work of our sanctification. To be able to see Him. To see Him behind every event in our lives. Or be found by Him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.